welcome back to another video. My name is Jill and today I'm going to be talking about my favorite books that I read in 2017. So let's get into it. The time has come to talk about all of the wonderful, amazing, spectacular, beautiful books that I read in 2017 and I cannot wait to share them with you all. Basically how this works is that throughout the year if I read a book that I am absolutely in love with on Goodreads, I put it on my favorite shelf and then at the end of the year I just go and pull all of those books out. So this year I actually ended up with 13 books that made it onto my favorites list and I love all of these books so so much. And to add a little extra fun I did decide to rank these in order so I'm going to be starting from 13 which is my least favorite favorite and going all the way down to my favorite book of 2017. Can you guess my favorite book of 2017? I'm pretty sure most of you can. So yeah, since I have 13 amazing books that I want to gush about, I'm just going to get right on into it. And yeah, so let's start with number 13. <laughs> favorite book of 2017 is The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Albertalli. This book essentially follows a girl named Molly who has had 26 unrequited crushes. Molly's basically best friend is her twin sister Cassie, but when Cassie gets a new girlfriend, Molly starts to feel a little lonely. And with Cassie's new girlfriend comes a new boy that Molly has her eye on, and the story basically goes from there. The reason why this book made it onto my list this year is because the sheer number of representation and diversity that is included in this book is jaw-dropping. Not only is Molly herself overweight, but her sister Cassie is also bisexual and they are Jewish and there's so many more representations that are included in this book that it would take so long to point out every single one of them. Overall, this book made my heart so so happy. It was super cute and like I said, the representation was amazing and I'm so happy that I read it. Honestly, this book made me so so happy because the story was adorable. It made me laugh and made me cry and also like I said just the thing that really sealed the deal with me is the amount of representation that was included in this book. I'm just so thankful that I read it in 2017 and that it has made it onto this list because it certainly deserves so much recognition and praise. <laughs> For number 12, I have my favorite classic that I read in the year of 2017 because I always like to include some of my favorite classics in this list and this is actually a play that has completely and totally stolen my heart and that is Othello by William Shakespeare. Um, I love this book so much that I decided to do my huge senior thesis on it um, and as you can see I've tabbed it up so much and annotated the crap out of it and I just love this story so so much. I adore Shakespeare in general and this is one of my favorite plays by him. My favorite thing about it is that there's this character in this Yago who is the best villain that I think I've read about ever. I love villains in general and so to see like a very well written villain just makes me so giddy inside and so that's the main reason why I liked it and I think it has so much to offer and yeah so I adore this play so so much. <laughs> Coming in at number 11, I have The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis. Now, if you ignore the fact that this book is in a shade of yellow that doesn't 100% agree with me, this book is so important. This book basically centers around rape culture and it's really hard to describe um, basically what goes on in this book without spoiling it, so I'm going to be very, very minor with my details about it. Like I said, that it does deal with rape culture and so there are trigger warnings warnings for rape and also like extremely violent scenes and if that's not really your thing reading it just I can't even describe my emotions felt a knot when I was reading this book because the topics that it deal with are rough topics like this book isn't pretty it is not pretty and it does not paint a pretty light over rape culture in today's society it paints it in a very realistic raw way and so I was reading it and I had a knot in my stomach it follows a bunch of different perspectives and they sort of all have a different view on the situation that's going on there's also some murder and some mystery that's included in this book and overall I think that it was masterfully crafted and it is I feel like it is so underhyped and that more people should be reading it because it is honestly one of the most important books that I read in 2017 because it opened my eyes to so many different things. It talked about these extremely sensitive topics in such an eye-opening and sort of down-to-earth way um, and it also is super creepy and so I really liked that aspect too and overall this book has so much going for it so please pick it up if you haven't read it yet. It is so important and I loved it. <laughs> Coming in at 
number 10 is kind of a cheat book because I read this, I started this book at the very, very end of 2017 and I just finished it yesterday as in I finished it in 2018. So technically, like if it were to be on the list, it should be on my favorite books of 2018 video, but I'm going to talk about it now because I just want to talk about it and I love this book so much and technically I started it in 2017, so it made it onto this list and that's how you know how good it is because I made it onto this list even though it technically didn't finish it in 2017. Anyway, and coming in at number 10 is The Color Project by Sierra Abrams. Oh my god. Book. This book. This book! Okay, I have been in the worst reading slump ever. I've been totally focusing on other things, I've been really stressed with school, and I just haven't been feeling reading. But reading this book made me fall in love with reading again. It really, really did. It was the first time in so long that I stayed up until 2 a.m. and I was crying and I was laughing and I was like spamming my friend with messages of me literally dying when I was reading this book um, and I just I loved it so much it basically follows this girl named B and she ends up meeting this guy named Levi and he is in charge of this whole charity organization thing um, and it's super cute but it also deals with really t tough and rough topics um, that I think were just so wonderfully crafted and it's so down to earth and from the author note I fell in love with Sierra and when I finished this book I messaged Sierra on Twitter and she messaged me back and we've been talking and I love her so much and Sierra you're such a blessing you're the sweetest person ever I swear anyway so I have so many feelings when it comes to this book it made me fall in love with reading again so obviously I had to include it onto this list um, and please pick it up if you have it. it is so 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 worthy of love and it deals with so many wonderful things and I just I'm never gonna stop talking about it. I love it so much. Number nine, we got the conclusion to a trilogy, one of my favorite trilogies of all time, and obviously I had to include it because, oh my god, and that is A Conjuring of Light by V. E. Schwab. This is the third novel in the Shades of Magic trilogy, and the Shades of Magic trilogy basically follows this world where there are all, there are parallel Londons, there's like Red London and Grey London and White London, and there are different levels of magic in each of these Londons, and our book basically follows two main characters. One is named Kel, and he is one of the only people who can travel in between these different parallel Londons. And we also follow this really badass woman pirate named Delilah Bard. And let me tell you, this this final book, <laughs> it had my heart racing. I literally, I feel like I finished this so quick even though it was like the biggest thing ever. It ended things so beautifully and I couldn't have asked for a better conclusion to one of the best series that I've read. I love all the characters in this, in this series and I just, I still miss them because it's over and I still miss them so much but this was honestly a beautiful conclusion to this series and yes. <laughs> Coming in at number 8, I have Maybe Someday by Colleen Hoover. 2017 was the year that I discovered Colleen Hoover and I've since fallen in love with her books. I read most of her books, I haven't read all of them yet, but I've read a good number of them and this has been my favorite so far because it has been the most relatable to me. And I will stick to this forever. I'm not going to give a direct summary for this book because I truly believe that it's better to go into Colleen Hoover's books not knowing anything except for the fact that they are new adults romances and that they are romances but they do follow some heavy topics and even telling what the heavy topic is sort of like spoil something a little bit but I'm just gonna say that uh, this is the book that I related to the most and I felt so much for it and I just <sighs> every book by Colleen Hoover makes me sob in my bed at 2 o'clock in the morning um, and this book was no exception that's basically all I have to say is that I loved it a lot it made me cry and it made me feel so many things <laughs> We are getting down to sort of the middle of the pile with number seven. I have The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This book got so much hype when it came out. It was like number one on the New York Times bestseller for so long and it totally deserved to be there. I read this during book two with Dawn and I cannot even describe how much love I have for this book. This is a story that is basically based on the Black Lives Matter movement. It follows a black teenage girl and she actually witnesses one of her really good friends get shot by a white police officer and it basically tells the story of the aftermath of that and how their community deals with it. And this book 
is so essential in today's culture that I just want to make everyone out there read it because it deals with the issue of Black Lives Matter and police brutality in a very understandable way to where people like me who aren't directly exposed to it can understand and sympathize and understand like what is going on and it is perfect for the times and it is so well written. If you haven't read this book yet, please give it a try. It is beautiful, it is wonderful, and it deals with this topic in such an elegant way. I love it so much. Ah! For number six on my favorites list, I have Heartless by Marissa Meyer. Um, this book is Marissa Meyer's um, Red Queen retelling from Alice in Wonderland, and guys, whew. when this book first came out, I actually saw a lot of people that I trusted giving it like three stars, and so I was like, oh my god, I don't know whether I want to read that or not. Marissa Meyer wrote The Lunar Chronicles, which is one of my favorite series of all time, but I was weary. I was weary going into this book, but boy was I wrong. From the very first chapter, I fell head over heels in love with it. The main character, Catherine, is a baker and so there were a ton of references to like all these things that she was baking and it was the cutest thing and can I just say that Jest is my heart and soul and he deserves the world and I love him so much and you know un unpopular opinion and this really is an unpopular opinion I'm not like the biggest fan of Alice in Wonderland like I read it and I'm sort of like okay I can see why people like it but I personally don't like love Alice in Wonderland but this book made me fall in love with Alice in Wonderland because it was just so good and I loved it. Plus it is so gorgeous like can we just take a moment <laughs> to appreciate this cover art like thank you to whoever designed it because that is the coolest thing I've seen in a while. <laughs> Here we go, we got our top five coming up. Um, coming in at number five is a book that I actually haven't really talked about on this channel because I've just recently read it and it has totally stolen my heart and it came out of left field. I wasn't expecting this to happen um, and that is Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. Now if you saw my haul when I got this book, I said that John Green isn't really one of my favorite authors. I love The Fault in Our Stars. Every single other one of his books I didn't like, so I wasn't even gonna get this book. I really wasn't until I heard everyone raving about it, so I decided, okay, fine. I'll pick it up and I'll read it and I'll see. And I've never been so wrong about my opinions on a book than I was when I thought that I was gonna hate this book because I love it so desperately. Essentially this book centers around a girl named Aza and she suffers from a certain type of OCD and it's basically her trying to deal with that. That is what this book is about. The way that John Green describes mental health and describes OCD, I feel like it's the most honest and raw portrayal that I've ever seen of mental health and OCD. And I know this is also an own voices novel because John Green also suffers with OCD, not this exact OCD that Aza has but a form of OCD and so he knows he knows what goes through people's heads who have OCD and so the way that he is able to put those thoughts that are so hard to put into words into this book still blows my mind. I cannot understand how he was able to do it because he describes it in a way that I've never seen described before and that I don't think anyone else can ever describe it as because if you've read this book you understand like his descriptions of Oz's sort of like mind spirals were jaw-dropping. I can't get over them. So other than that aspect obviously this book was super cute. The romance was I loved it and so this book has so much going for it but my favorite aspect was definitely the representation of mental health and I completely understand why so many people were freaking out about it um, when it first came out because it totally deserves all that hype. So yes, number five, amazing. Pick it up if you haven't. <laughs> Here we go, number four, we got Gemini by Amy Kaufman and Jay Krista. Holy shit this book. This book is a sequel to Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff, which was in my top three um, books of 2016, so you know, obviously this series does things to me, um, and I would say I might even like this book more than the first one. And this is actually not the direct sequel to Illuminae, it is the companion novel to Illuminae, so it follows different characters, but the characters in Illuminae are mentioned. This is a sci-fi novel that has a bunch of space battles. Did it show the 
format yet, which is the coolest part. The format, if you haven't seen it yet, which I find hard to believe, it is literally like told in files and like there's all these like super computers that are in here. The coolest damn thing that I read all year. Like I can say that with certainty that it is the coolest thing and that I cannot wait for the last book in this series. I can't wait for it. I mean, it blew my mind. It uses these like space like time concepts that I just, that just blow my mind completely out of the water. So it blew me away and that's all I got to say about it because that's all I can say unless you just want like incoherent screeching, which is what I want to do when I think of this book. Here we go. It's time for my top three favorite books of 2017. Coming in at number three, I have The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. I basically like to pitch this book as a Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens agenda meets Pirates of the Caribbean in the 1700s following a bisexual man character. This book, hands down, takes the prize as the most hilarious book that I read in 2017. I was laughing. I was crying because I was laughing so hard. The humor that is in this book is a hundred percent my humor. It was hilarious. It was sassy. It was snarky. It was hilarious. It was so funny. It was so funny. He follows a guy named Monty and he goes with his friend Percy on basically like this tour of Europe. It also deals with a bunch of different representations and diversity which I thought were super super interesting. I don't want to mention them because it is a spoiler for the book because it doesn't come up until like the middle of it but if you've read it you understand the representation that I'm talking about which is really interesting. Mackenzie Lee included it in this book that's set like so far in the past but it was great. I loved it. It made me laugh. It made me cry. It made me so so happy and it just I love it so much coming in at number two I have Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare oh this series oh my god this book is the second book in the Dark Artifices series by Cassandra Clare it follows Emma and Julian in the LA Institute so this book is set after like all of the other Mortal Instruments books so if you want to read this book you do have to read the Mortal Instruments books and the Infernal Devices and then you can get to the Dark Artifices um, but this book Ah, my heart. I think my favorite part about this book is that I love and cherish every single character in this book. Normally it's like I love the two main characters and the side characters, yeah they're pretty good, but every single character in this book has my heart. The entire Blackthorn family I just want to squeeze so hard and I just, that's never happened for me before that I read a book that has so many characters um, and I love absolutely every single one of them. So this book is pretty special. Now it's time for my favorite book of 2017. Can you guys guess it? You guys probably can. Probably not a big surprise to most of you. My favorite book of 2017 is, of course, Strange the Dreamer by Lady Taylor. I talk about this book all the damn time. It is beautiful, whimsical, the most beautiful book that I have read in 2017 hands down. It is the perfect book for book lovers. Uh, it basically deals with this guy named Laszlo Strange and he is a librarian and it's set in this completely different world and he starts to have dreams of this lost city um, but he thinks that it's his imagination until he finds out that the city actually exists and he goes on this magical journey kind of thing and it like there's blue people that are in here and it's literally the most whimsical damn beautiful imaginative story that I've ever read and thinking about it makes my heart clench. Um, the writing style is not for everyone. Some people think that it's pretty long-winded. I disagree with that, but I suppose I can see where people are coming from. Um, so it might not be for everyone, but it was exactly my kind of book. I love this book with all of my soul. And you guys know this. I feel like I don't really have to like go on a big long rant about why I love it so much because I talk about it in almost every single video. This book is so, so special to my heart and it just it made me love reading that much more when I read it and I think that that is pretty magical yeah I'm not gonna be able to do this safely oh oh ah ah there they are my top oh 
my top books of 2017. I'm dying, I gotta put these down. So there you guys have it, those were my top 13 books of 2017. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a like if you did, subscribe if you're new here, and please let me know down below your favorite book that you read in 2017. I have all my social media linked down below in the description box if you guys want to follow me on those platforms. Yeah, I think that's gonna be it for this video. Thanks again so much for watching, and I will see you later in another video very soon. Bye!